So one of the modifications of the second um, postulate is, uh, or one of the, um, the follow-ups of the, the second postulate, postulate is uh, the quantum state collapse or the, the wave function collapse postulates. I'm, I'm, I'm not writing wave function here because I want to stay away from wave functions until we're ready to talk about infinitely dimensional quantum systems. But um, so we've introduced the concept of an ideal measurement, namely a measurement where the physical system is not destroyed by the measurement. And so what the quantum state collapse um, postulate says is that if uh, a result of an ideal measurement of A is one of the eigenvalues of A, then immediately after this measurement, the system will be in the state projected on the subspace corresponding with that eigenvalue. So um, it will be, if, if there's only a, if this is a non-degenerate eigenvalue, then the system will be projected on a um, eigenvector corresponding with that eigenvalue. So um, in general, though, we use our projection operators P sub n on the state phi and then renormalize it um, by dividing through the norm. So the measurement has as um, as as impact or, or as influence or has as as outcome um, the projection of the state on the um, eigenvector subspace that corresponds with the eigenvalue that was measured. So this is of course very different from um, classical mechanics, from classical physics, where we understand measurements to be something that, that doesn't change the system, but only gives us information about what the system, what state the system was in before the measurement. Um, but instead, now in quantum mechanics, what happens is that um, the system was not in a particular state before it was measured. However, what happens is the, the measurement itself forces the system to fall into a particular uh, state in a particular um, eigenvector subspace of, uh, um, of, of the, the possible allowed um, Hilbert space of states. So um, we can, of course, use uh, another thing that we've talked about before that's our complete set of compatible operators so if we make one of these ideal measurements of the system with a complete set of compatible operators and of course if there's more than one um, operator in that complete set then then we will we'll have to make ideal measurements because we don't want to destroy the measurement with our first measure destroy the system with our first measurement so we have to have ideal measurements and if we apply a complete set of compatible operators, which remember um, allows us to um, specify uh, the 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 this or specify a basis of the full Hilbert space um, based on just the eigenvalues. So if we are able to uh, make a measurement of a system with this complete set of compatible operators, that constitutes a maximal test of the state factor. What it basically does is it it uh, forces the system through this um, this kind of second prime um, quantum state collapse postulate. It forces the system into a fully determined state, a state that is fully determined by all of the quantum numbers uh, of uh, of our measurement, and therefore um, is forced into a state where this projection operator on the state will only return a single eigenvector. And so if we force our state along that single eigenvector, then of course we've uh, prepared our system in a very um, determined state where um, we can use it for, uh, for, future, um, uh, for future measurements. So that's another aspect. Um, one of the postulates that kind of follows from the, from the second postulate um, and uh, that uh, I want to introduce in this video. Okay, we'll talk about the last postulate in the next video.